I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain.io for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Rong Chen, the CEO of Elastos. Welcome to the show, Rong. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I'd really love to hear a little bit about Elastos and then one thing that makes it unique that you guys are proud of. Well, uh, actually, we are uh, we're building a new internet uh, based on the blockchain. So uh, we're proud that uh, we're in sync with the uh, TV series, uh, Silicon Valley. <laughs> we're maybe a little bit ahead of time. That's awesome. Ahead of their uh, uh, episodes. Definitely, yeah, no, they've, uh, it's definitely helped bring a lot of people into the industry as well and more traction and growth. So I do appreciate that. So I know you guys are working on a lot of different things. Um, maybe we could just touch on some technical things for the, the crypto nerds. You know, how does Elastos blockchain protect digital assets and ensure their scarcity? Uh, well, uh, that's a good question because uh, my understanding is that uh, the blockchain alone cannot uh, create the scarcity and uh, uh, protect the uh, digital assets. Because uh, um, the blockchain can only issue a limited number of tokens, right? That's all uh, the ledgers or the blockchain could do. Uh, on the other hand, the digital assets, uh, anything more than a number, you know, say a ebook, a movie, a game, um, has to be uh, executed or displayed, rendered on the screen, which mm -hmm. uh, definitely needs uh, a execution environment, a runtime environment. So then if you look at uh, a current uh, programming model, right, uh, all applications on the internet, they send and receive packets themselves. So with that in mind, literally uh, the third party applications is uh, potentially could copy, parse the contents. Mm -hmm. If we don't stop uh, the applications from sending and receiving packets, that's a very uh, simple um, basic requirements. Then we cannot prevent parse. We, cannot, yeah. we cannot make uh, any digital assets uh, of value. So that's where we need to build a completely new uh, virtual machine operating system, which uh, prevents applications from sending and receive packages. Because uh, after all, all digital assets has to be executed. Let's say if you have a movie, it's played by the media player. If you have ebook, it's rendered by uh, ePub, rendered by uh, e ebook viewer, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you open up that digital asset, uh, first of all, uh, the opening process have to check against blockchain to make sure you have the right to open it. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, uh, when you run that uh, contents, so you, I mean, the application could not steal <laughs> the contents themselves, right? So actually, there are, it's like a, a coin has two sides. And people, uh, most people talk about the uh, scarcity, the token side of it, mm -hmm. but they forgot the other side of the coin actually is the execution. Definitely, definitely. And so you guys have to build your own virtual machine to compute all of this uh, efficiently. And um, in blockchain, there's been a lot of different ways to do things, but a lot of people have been jumping on Ethereum because of the ease of use and because it's been around for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys have any plans to have any integrations with Ethereum or any of the other main uh, virtual machines? Uh, uh, yes, actually, uh... We, uh, we look at Ethereum in two ways. One is uh, Ethereum is popular. We definitely uh, see the trend, uh, see uh, the rea reality here. So we build the side chain on top of the Elastos main chain. The side chain actually is running on the internet instead of running on the mining machines. So that's the second point. We don't want to run smart contracts or dApps on the mining machines. We want to run the smart contracts and dApps on the internet. Mm -hmm. So we have already built uh, uh, side chains running on the internet. Ba basically, you, you launch uh, several virtual machines and uh, deploy the uh, EVM uh, runtimes, right? And uh, that's uh, pretty much implemented on top of uh, Elastos uh, uh, side chain right now. Okay. It's under internal testing. So we are going to support uh, Neo side chain, uh, Neo smart contracts oh, and Ethereum uh, uh, smart contracts, but uh, on the side chains, not on yeah. their mining machines. Very interesting. Awesome. And are you guys also planning on doing integrations into IoT devices? 
Uh, yeah, we actually we have already had uh, uh, two partners. Uh, one is a, a set up uh, box vendor. Actually, it's a solution provider. They don't really make their own brands, but they provide the solutions to uh, many uh, set up boxes. Currently, we have the Elastos Carrier. That's another thing uh, which I think it's important because carrier literally were building a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, internet. That's mm -hmm. what the internet is, right? It's a internet. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized carrier. You can think of AT and T, and without AT and T, it's a you know virtual machines uh, being the uh, phones, right? Mm -hmm. Virtual phones, and uh, we do have this peer-to-peer -peer network running already, and um, we have the carrier. Uh, software, uh, alpha versions of it installed mm -hmm. into a quarter million set up boxes already. Currently, mm -hmm. those uh, quarter million set up boxes are running in homes, literally in homes. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we put the alpha version in not interfering with their existing business. But that said, uh, first ver uh, feature we provide to the set up box vendors uh, remote desktop. So for techn uh, uh, technical support, say, um, if the owner of the setup box telling the uh, the product support uh, there's a like a, a, a number right a sequence number and then the product support can take over the uh, remote desktop and helping the uh, consumer to tune in to the channels or solving the problems uh, remotely. Mm -hmm. Basically, with that feature, we're testing the bandwidth. We're testing the uh, reachability into uh, uh, different locales. And uh, of course, we also have the so-called OTA building, so over-the-air uh, upgrades. Mm -hmm. So we're making, uh, you know, so so then the uh, hardware can upgrade, right? Adding more features, like we're going to add a family support, like uh, you know, the the, the, the grandchildren's uh, pictures <laughs> were yep. remotely definitely uh, displayed on TVs as uh, as a screen saver. So those things are, are currently uh, under working. It's uh, into a quarter million homes already. And uh, we expect that set up box uh, installations will reach about uh, half a million or more by the end of this year. And we also have another uh, partner, uh, IOEX. They are preparing to ship uh, smart speakers for the Christmas season. That's awesome. It's also to at least uh, hundreds of thousands of them uh, deployed by Christmas time. That's great. So. The Elastos carriers, if I understand correctly, are they are a physical box that are in hundreds of thousands of homes already. Um, yeah. And part of that is the Elastos TV, but it can also do many other things as well. Uh, uh, I, it's not Elastos TV. It's okay. the existing TV. OK. So kind of it's a, a side by side. We're not interviewing with the. So we're not saying decentralization will re replace the existing Internet. We're saying the decentralized the internet and the existing internet will live side by side. Yeah. So not interfering with the main business, but on the other hand, eventually we're going to encourage uh, uh, peer to peer decentralized services like uh, decentralized YouTube. But That's currently cool. it's all centralized the video stream right now. Definitely. Yes. And, and as far as the distribution goes so far with Elastos TV, are you guys mainly in Asia or is it expanding to North America? Are you guys working with other broadcast networks to expand globally? Uh, actually, we, we intended to expand globally because uh, currently the set up boxes are mostly in China. It's not because of the box itself. It's because of the content. Mm -hmm. Because the, currently the centralized video streaming were <laughs> mostly in Asia. Yeah. And now you guys have plans to expand to North America soon? Uh, yeah, like, like I said, uh, the smart speakers are going to be in mostly in Europe and America. Oh, that's great. Awesome. So what else do you guys have in the roadmap in the next six months that you're most excited for for Elastos? Well, uh, another thing is uh, we are trying to uh, currently this peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, decentralized uh, carrier is uh, it, it start to de deploy, right? And uh, another um, milestone that we want to achieve is uh, to have at least around half a million so-called uh, DID users by the end of this year. So uh, meaning if you see the current internet, no one has an ID per se. Yep. And uh, the current internet is decentralized. No one is controlling the internet on the other hand. Uh, since everyone can get onto the internet, everyone can fake the identity of someone else 
or intercept other people's messages or <laughs> launching DDoS attacks. So the in new internet we're building that uh, is powered by the blockchain. So then we can use the blockchain to issue IDs, which is not controlled by say at and or Amazon or mm -hmm. uh, WeChat, uh, Tencent or Alibaba, right? Yeah. So uh, on the other hand, we can also use the blockchain technology to grab the public keys, the private keys. So all the information uh, uh, will be peer to peer, encrypted. That's great. There's definitely a huge identity crisis over all the blockchains and a lot of industries won't be able to run until there is proper identity built into the system and people are able to prove you know, their, their funds or their assets. Right. So uh, we, are, we hope to get uh, like uh, half a million or so users to start using uh, this new internet. But still, like uh, while we deploy the, uh, the setup box, we're not interfering with the main business, right? So we're just really uh, uh, moving into this market in a very, very quiet, non-disturbing uh, manner. So those IDs, uh, first of all, they'll be used like, uh, uh, let's say a lot of mobile apps, you can add, uh, log in using the mobile app login. You can also log in using Facebook login. So uh, for some of the applications we deployed with our partners, mm -hmm. they can use, use their existing uh, application login and also they can use the uh, decentralized ID to log in, right? Yep. As subtle as that, yep. everything else is the same. But yep. then they could have an option to log in using the decentralized ID to log in instead of Facebook login. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That's a smart way to do it. And I understand that you should really lower the barriers to entry and educate mm -hmm. people and incentivize them rather than force them to use uh, new right. technology, especially if it's technical and there's barriers to entry, uh, you have a lot of problems. Right, correct. We're not saying that uh, people through, throughout, uh, you know, Facebook, throughout uh, some existing popular uh, mobile apps. Mm -hmm. What we're saying is uh, if you log in using our DID, then you'll see there's a, a wallet in there, in there, right? You may, you may not use the wallet, right? Mm -hmm. But then using the wallet, uh, eventually, as I said, uh, the application will... Uh, update from time to time, right? Very subtle way we new, add new features to existing apps. So we plan, we plan to have something like, you have a wallet, then you can have some uh, scarcity-based uh, digital assets. Mm -hmm. So you can own, you can trade, you can sell uh, eventually, right? Slowly throughout the year of uh, 2019. That's awesome. So moving into 2019, what do you see as the biggest obstacle or challenge that Elastos is going to need to overcome? Well, currently, if you follow Elastos, uh, it, uh, by and large, this project is huge. It is. Right? A lot of people believe Elastos is a, is a blockchain project, which is true. But we, we are time times larger, at least. Right, because so yeah. first of all, we build our main chain, uh, join mine, uh, join do the join mining with Bitmain, uh, BTC.com, yep. the mining pools, and we build uh, side chains, which is uh, you know supporting this uh, Ethereum smart contracts, Neo smart contracts, and eventually we're building our own smart contracts. And uh, thirdly, we are actually having we have we have partners building um, IPFS compatible uh, technology which could be potentially 10 times faster, leveraging the setup boxes we deployed. Uh, so every project alone, you know, it's bigger than the, or, or on par to some other blockchain projects. <clears throat> then Definitely. we're going to have those uh, uh, half a million DID users using some dApps, right? And uh, the dApps in my mind, uh, we will have a definition much broader than the smart contracts. We are a super set of smart contracts. In my mind, DAP is something that cannot be turned off by the third party. Yep. Let's say if I, we want to do a, a stream um, video uh, from you to me or me to you, uh, then this video should not be intercepted or uh, turned off by some websites. So that's my definition of DAP. It's not... What I mean, what I'm saying is the DApps is not the one, not only the ones running on money machines. 
many more, actually 90%, at least 90% more will be running peer to peer on the internet. Why do we have to have a redundancy for our video conferencing? Right? Exactly. So long as the video conferencing cannot be turned off by the third party, we are a DAP. With that definition, we're definitely much, at least 10 times larger than existing, existing smart contracts. <clears throat> yeah, so it's really just about making sure all of the different subsections of the business are following the proper timeline and roadmaps because you guys are doing so many different things. Yeah, so the tumbling block actually is the recognition of, uh, they're saying, why do you want to, let's say we have issued th that many tokens, right? Then they're saying, how come, you know, $2 million is not enough or well, $30 million is not enough for you guys? You know, $30 million is not a lot of money for, for startups of a blockchain of uh, five people, mm -hmm. right? But on the other hand, we, if you're building a new internet, what is a uh, $30 million? Yeah. Nothing. And also, it's not us. Actually, it's the ecosystem. It's the partners. How much do I know? We need people to uh, do, because you own your own data, then who is helping you to do the decentralized marketing? Mm -hmm. So we need uh, marketing partners. And if we have the internet, who is doing the streaming, right? As mm -hmm. I said, the clone of uh, IPFS. Who is doing that? It's not, who is doing the cloud storage? Who is doing the the virtual machines uh, uh, in, in Docker, in Amazon clouds. Mm -hmm. So those are all need different expertise uh, of, of partners. Definitely. So we need to, we need collaborations and we need sure. uh, acceptance. Definitely. So if people are looking to, you know, make some collaborations with Elastos, help out uh, with the project or the community, what's the best way to get involved? Uh, well, we, uh, we have two ways. Uh, the project actually consists of uh, uh, two main parts. One is the infrastructure, which is sponsored by the Elastos Foundation. We call it the uh, core team. And then the other one is uh, we call uh, Cyber Republic. Currently, the proportion is that uh, Elastos Foundation has 10% of the pre-mined tokens, mm -hmm. and uh, the Cyber Republic uh, has about half. So that's the proportion, right? <laughs> yeah. That uh, in my mind, at least, actually, the uh, the ecosystem should be even larger than five times more. Wow! And uh, that said, uh, people could approach us. Uh, uh, they could e either approach the Elastos Foundation to build the infrastructure, or they could approach the Cyber Republic to build the ecosystems. Great, awesome. Well, uh, that's all the time that we have today. But uh, thank you so much, Ron, for answering all of the new questions on Elastos. I'm looking forward to following up with you guys again in the coming months to see how your side chains have developed and the distribution of the DID and the uh, carrier boxes. So um, thank you so much for your time and I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you.